Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris, coming to you from the annual Bringing America Back to Life Symposium in Cleveland, Ohio. Each year, the second weekend of March, organizers bring in speakers from all over the country and the world to talk about the growing threat to human life and dignity in areas of culture, science, politics, and governments. We at Church Militant pay special attention, as you know, to the threat to not just temporal human life, but also, most importantly, spiritual life. It's why we have and continue to concentrate so much of our resources towards unearthing the rot in the church. And doing this every day, we can tell you the rot and betrayal of the truth goes a lot deeper than almost anyone realizes and happens in a million different ways. We can talk about things on a macro level, the big picture, or we can sometimes talk about things on a micro level, specific examples, and show how each of them relates or feeds back into the big picture. Today, a micro example. This one from the Diocese of Lansing, Michigan, and the bishop there, Earl Boyer. Back in 2014, a sexual assault victim informed Boyer of an assault perpetrated against him by a priest who had gained some notoriety on Ave Maria Radio out of Ann Arbor. The priest is Father Pat Egan, and his show on Ave Maria was entitled Fully Alive. Egan is a priest of the Archdiocese of Westminster, London, England. He's been living in the U.S. for a number of years now. When the victim reported the assault to Boyer in 2014, Boyer did nothing of relevance. He told the victim, an adult male, who had also been an adult at the time of the assault, that since Egan was not a Lansing priest, he, Boyer, couldn't do anything, like remove his faculties, for example. However, four years later, in 2018, once word got out about Egan, Boyer did then remove his faculties. In a very untransparent press release, Boyer kept most of what he knew very close to his vest, revealing only the barest minimum that he had to. The relevant part read that Egan, quote, has had his priestly faculties removed due to a credible allegation of inappropriate sexual behavior with an adult male, closed quote. What it does not say, this is the point here, what it does not say, one, the assault happened four years earlier than the press release was dated, two, Boyer knew about it back then, and three, it was not just sexual behavior, it was an assault, a homo predator clerical assault. Those missing details are important because of the implication attached. Why would Boyer conceal that it was an actual assault? He kept it hidden. Why? Why did Boyer keep hidden that the assault had happened four years earlier? Why would Boyer not acknowledge that he had personal knowledge of this four years earlier? Reading the press statement, it could be easily interpreted to mean that Boyer just became aware of the consensual homosexual relationship involving a priest, and the moment he discovered it, being the strong bishop he is, he immediately stepped in and fixed the matter. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. Boyer concealed, deliberately, the most relevant facts to cover for his own inaction. Egan had an earlier charge against him that Boyer knew about as well. In that case, the Diocesan Review Board, Boyer says, determined that the earlier accusation was not credible. Again, in a case of covering up and making misleading statements, Boyer failed to acknowledge that on that diocesan review board was none other than Father Egan's religious superior, who went to bat for him and got the charge deemed not credible. But Boyer never revealed that little piece of information either. This is a small example of why growing, largely growing, numbers of Catholics increasing every day are looking at their bishops and saying they simply cannot be trusted, period. If they aren't out and out liars like Cardinals Wurl, Supich, Tobin, and Farrell, then they're parsing their words and publishing deliberately ambiguously worded statements with the intent to mislead. All the bowing at the altar of transparency and the offering of incense to the gods of accountability is pure bunk. It's no longer a case of the credibility of these men being destroyed, but the truth of the faith. The church herself is being damaged by these scoundrels 
who treat the church as their own private company, pretending to care about the faithful, all the while holding them in a kind of contempt. Church Militant was given an audio recording made at a public gathering where Boyer was confronted about his wrongdoing. And the sarcasm and the contempt in his answers is palpable. No remorse, nothing. Just sarcasm and lashing out in almost accusatory tones. These men live in a surreal world where no one is allowed to question them and they rarely, if ever, suffer the consequences of their actions, only in the most heinous of cases. Brother bishops defend them in a kind of suicide pact mentality, ensuring that if one goes down, many others would follow. So they enjoy a kind of mutually assured destruction, carefully keeping as much under the wraps as possible. Well, here's a thought for the bishop and for others to chew on. The original assault happened in 2014, a sexual assault. That's a crime according to Michigan statutes. The statute of limitations has not run out on that crime. Boyer knew about the crime and did not report it, quite possibly making him an accessory after the fact because he knowingly protected a criminal or someone he should have had reasonably believed to be a criminal. Likewise, because the 2014 crime was related to the earlier crime that Boyer knew about the decision of the diocesan board maybe being rigged, his knowledge of that could very well open up that case again. This is all stuff, of course, for lawyers to look at, and Church Milton has information that the Michigan State Attorney General is indeed looking at this case involving Boyer. A few years ago, a bishop in Kansas City, Bishop Finn, was removed for failing to report a case of sexual assault involving a minor male. In 2014, Bishop Boyer failed to report a case of sexual assault involving an adult male. The statute of limitations had run out on the Kansas City case, it has not run out on the Lansing case. So the obvious question is this, why is Boyer still Bishop of Lansing? And are criminal charges possibly awaiting him? Is it the case that it's not okay to sexually assault a child, but it's acceptable for a priest to sexually assault a male adult? The entire mindset of the US bishops has to change, and it has to change now. No more secrets, no more deflections, no more arrogance. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.